What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. So after the relative popularity of the Shark Scientist Reacts to Shark Attack videos from last season, we're back again with the sequel. If you happen to miss the last video that we did on this, make sure you click this link here and give it a watch. In today's video, we've got a range of different clips, some of which I hesitate to call shark attacks, but there are some interesting behaviors on show. We've got the usual suspects featuring again, i.e. great whites, tiger sharks, and bull sharks, who as a trio make up for the vast majority of shark attacks around the world every year. However, However, there is a very interesting and different species that we've got a clip of today, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see which one that is. Like I said in the first video, sharks are apex predators, guys, and should be treated with some serious respect if you don't want to get hurt. Also, it's important for me to point out that sharks are not senseless man-eaters, which they have been made out to be in the past, and generally are pretty wary of humans. It's my hope that showing you and talking you through some of these clips will give you an appreciation that there's a lot more going on to the surface from a behavioral perspective. Anyway, let's check out our first clip. Okay, up first, we're off to Fiji on what immediately looks like a provisioning site for tiger sharks. This is basically where companies take a bunch of divers down, sit them at the bottom, and lure the sharks in with bait. Pretty quickly here, though, you can see this rogue tiger shark appears to have strayed from the main watch area and has somehow ended up behind the line of divers. So as the safety divers try and frantically push that tiger shark away, it starts having a right good chomp on one of the unsuspecting tourists. It looks like the shark isn't actually biting the diver, but... It seems to have kind of latched on to the regulator connection on the back of the scuba tank. You can see here though, the guy who was on the receiving end of it has actually lost his dive mask, which makes me think the shark was actually applying enough force with that bite to knock that off his head. So we've got a second angle of the incident here and you can just really see the chaos of that scene. Bubbles everywhere, loads of divers lined up and probably not enough safety divers. It's interesting actually because this safety diver here actually redirects that tiger shark down into the line of tourists and then the second safety diver in an attempt to push that shark away with the pole has actually caused the tiger to go into that feeding mode. The pole is pushed close to the mouth and it has a little nibble and then that nictitating membrane rolls over and it's just in bite mode. From then on, the tiger's basically chomping blind and actually can't really see what it's doing. It's just biting. Realistically, this encounter could have been so much worse. So what's going on here? Well, straight away, this technically isn't really a shark attack. The confusion and the chaos of the scene has led this to happening. You've got scuba bubbles everywhere, which has probably initially led to that tiger shark breaching the line of divers. And then it's just a cacophony of errors from the safety divers who don't really manage to deter the shark enough. Okay, admittedly, they're the ones that managed to push the tiger shark away in the end, but this is one of the massive risks with provisioning sites. When there's food around, accidents can most definitely happen. Okay, next up, this is a pretty short clip so I'm just going to play it on repeat while I talk about it. It's a pretty famous clip and I'm sure a lot of you will have seen it before but this diver who I believe is an abalone diver has a really close encounter with the great white shark. You can see in the clip the guy is completely unaware that a great white shark has just appeared from the murk almost exactly at head height before bonking him and swimming off. <laughs> I think one of the most interesting things about the clip though is it just shows you when you're diving in fairly murky conditions, sharks can literally appear from nowhere, just like this one. It's also a great example showing you that diving or swimming in murky waters can really increase your chances of getting a bite from a shark. In conditions like this, sharks are using their other senses to explore their environment and they can't actually see very well. But I think one of the main take home points here is that if this shark really wanted to bite or eat this man, it quite easily could have but it didn't. You can see the head is pointed completely down, so it's using those ampullae of Lorenzini on the front of the snout, and that's detecting the electrical impulses coming from this diver. The thing is, as soon as the shark makes contact, it immediately realizes whatever this is isn't a prey item and swims off pretty quickly. This is probably one of the clearest clips to date that just shows humans aren't really on the menu for sharks. It had absolutely no interest in following up that bite or circling back round for another go. You can see by that quick caudal fin movement at the end, the shark has actually spooked itself and wants to get out of there as fast as it can. Overall, a pretty fortunate encounter and thankfully the abalone diver managed to keep his head. Okay, next up, another pretty short one here and just a quick warning, this one is pretty brutal. So we're in Queensland, Australia, and we're in the water with a spearfisher. He's floating around a few meters below the surface before this bull shark comes completely out of the blue and charges towards him. The spearfisher's obviously defended himself here, and that shark has skewered itself on the spear gun. Now, I think my immediate go-to here is to recognize that this guy is spearfishing. According to the guy, he'd only shot one fish before this happened, and the fish had got away. So he's got no dead fish on his person, but... That's not to say the smell of fish blood wouldn't still be in the water. Although 
I'm not convinced that this attack was based around food. And the shark spotted on the camera early on in the footage. It initially looks like it's come in to check him out pretty slowly, but then it speeds up really quickly about five or six meters away. So straight up, I'm thinking this is a territorial defense charge. Bull sharks can be notoriously aggressive and also territorial over their home range. And my immediate thoughts are this is exactly what's happening here. The shark isn't happy about the guy being in and around the area and it's come straight up to him to ward him off. There's no way of knowing whether the shark would have followed through with the bite here, but based on the speed of that charge, it did look like it was probably going to bite him. Obviously, it's incredibly sad to see this shark die as a result of it, but I think when you're in that situation, as a snorkeler or a diver, you have to use whatever you have on your person to defend yourself. And in this case, it's a spear gun, of which he hasn't fired, by the way. He's literally just used it as a poking mechanism. And the shark has been coming at such a speed, it's managed to impale itself on that spear. I think this is one of those cases where there's probably not much else that could have been done here. And when you're in a situation like this, you obviously have to defend yourself. And sadly, that's resulted in the death of this shark. So some people are going to say here, well, he shouldn't be spearfishing or he's in the shark's environment. Realistically, you're never going to stop people doing this kind of activity. And arguably, it's actually significantly better for the environment when you compare spearfishing to that of industrial fishing. As a shark scientist, it's obviously not nice to see this shark killed, but I will always recommend to defend yourself as best as you can in these kind of situations. That animal is an apex predator, easily capable of killing that spearfisher. So if he hadn't have done what he did, then he might be a few limbs down or even dead. Okay, next up, we've got another tiger shark clip here from South Africa. So contextually here, this is another group of divers who've gone diving on a shark provisioning tour, although this one's a little bit different from the last one in the sense that the divers are actually mid-water as opposed to on the bottom. And this, as a result, is inherently more dangerous. Anyway, in these situations, when you're all mid-water, it's really important to make sure your body is straight and tall in the water column and that you stick together as a group. Although it looks like this diver here has completely ignored one of those rules and has managed to somehow isolate himself from the rest of the group and you can see this big tiger shark here approaching that diver and it latches down onto his thigh but pretty quickly the diver manages to push down on the nose of the tiger shark before the bite gets any more rigorous and the shark lets him go lucky boy so one of the really cool things about this clip is it's a great demonstration that sharks will often try and approach an object in the water in this case the diver from behind. Sharks are pretty sneaky predators and generally want to surprise their prey. And you can clearly see the shark doing exactly this. But then again, it's another great example that sometimes all it takes to deter a shark is a bop on the nose, which is that super sensitive area of the shark. And more often than not, that's enough to deter it. Sharks don't really like to take on prey that puts up a fight because it could result in themselves getting hurt. Anyway, the diver luckily gets away with just a few stitches in his leg and a little bit of a holy wetsuit, which all things considered is a pretty fortunate outcome. So lessons to be learned for next time? Well, you're always safer in a group. Never isolate yourself when you're out swimming with sharks. It's a pretty simple rule that people often forget, but it's actually so important for diving safely with sharks. And then finally, we've got this really interesting clip featuring an angel shark, which have been known in the past to have a pretty nasty bite. I believe we're in the Canary Islands here, and this angel shark is just minding its own business on the bottom. Although importantly here, it's surrounded by divers pretty much from every angle. The diver filming the shark gets a little bit too close and manages to spook it before it swims off really quickly and ends up taking a bite out of this lone diver's arm and then his fin. If we watch it again though, I think what's happened here is the shark has seen its own reflection in the lens of the underwater camera that's way too close to it and it's just gone into full-blown defense mode. When sharks are in this defensive mode, they can be really territorial and aggressive just like we saw in that previous bull shark clip. And the same can be said for this angel shark. It's surrounded by divers and has just splashed out at the lone diver, who again is slightly separated from the rest of the group. So the main things here are the camera is way too close to the shark and it's felt like it's been cornered with all those divers surrounding it from all different angles. And it's just splashed out at the diver who's slightly separated from the rest of the group. All of these things are what you don't want to do when you're swimming with sharks. Angel sharks might look pretty harmless, but they have a load of really sharp teeth in those mouths, definitely capable of causing serious damage. And you can see that in this clip here of the diver's wrist and arm. Bearing in mind that's through his wetsuit as well. He's actually really lucky he didn't lose any of his fingers there because those teeth are definitely sharp enough to sever fingers if the bite had enough force. So there we go, guys. There's your roundup of shark attack clips from the internet. If any of you have seen any other shark attack clips from the internet that I've missed, then please do post the links to those in the comments below and I will 100% include them in the next reactions video.
if they're good enough. And what did you think of some of these videos? I'm really keen to hear all of your thoughts in the comment section below, especially what you thought of that angel shark clip. Reckon I got it right? And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.